I'm going to show you how to work with bits and bit operators in Rust. These are useful for a few things, like compression algorithms, graphics programming, and network protocols. Before we get into operations on bits, let's look at how numbers are represented as binary bits. We'll print out the first few base two numbers, so one, two, four, and eight. And if you're not familiar with binary, you'll see why we're doing that when we run this code. This formatting trick of printing out hash 010b is a way of printing out the binary representation of a number. So the zero asks for the leading zeros to be printed. Then the one zero is a 10, and that's saying print out width 10, which is the eight bits of our byte, plus the two bits for the leading zero b, which tells us it's a binary representation of a number. So let's run this and see what it prints. We'll kick that off with cargo run. So these are the binary representations of our powers of two, and you can see how powers of two map exactly to one bit being set. So this gives us a visual way to understand the conversion between base 10 numbers, the numbers we're used to, and base two numbers that a computer understands. We can build the numbers that aren't powers of two as sums of these numbers. So for example, three would be represented as one plus two in decimal, and in binary, we would set the first bit and the second bit. So we'd have one, one at the end of our binary string. And then for the number five, we could do something similar where that would normally be four and one added together. We could set the third bit and the first bit. That would then be representing five to the computer. The other terminology used for the first bit is the low bit and the last bit at the left position is the high bit. So this is similar to place value in the decimal number system where numbers further to the left are more significant. So the one in one million is more significant than the one in 10. Okay, that's all the background we need. So let's get into bit operations. The first thing we're gonna need is some interesting bit patterns to work with so we can see what's happening. We'll first define a number that has the lowest four bits set. So the four bits on the right hand side of the eight bits in our byte. And that we can do using the numbers we've already defined above and printed out the binary for. And then we're gonna have a second number which has off on alternating down through the bit pattern so the high bit's not set on the left next bit is and then 0 1 0 1 0 1 down to the bottom so then we can apply some operators to these so the first one we're going to look at is the bitwise or this compares each bit in the byte pairwise treating 0 and 1 like boolean values and then it behaves exactly like a boolean or so 0 and 0 we output a 0 bit 1 and 0 or 0 and 1 we output a 1 bit 1 and 1, we output a 1 bit. So like a logical OR and applied bit by bit all the way down the bit, all the way down the two bytes, and to produce the output. So then the next operator is similar. It's an AND, which is similar. It takes two inputs, produces one output, and it's applying an AND all the way down. The next one doesn't have a Boolean logic equivalent as a single operator in Rust. You have to construct it from other operators. And this is the XOR, or the exclusive OR. So this is very similar to the OR, except that when you have two ones to compare, that'll come out as false. So it only produces a one bit when exactly one side of the comparison is one. So one and zero and zero and one produce a one in the output, otherwise it's zero. So the next thing is the shift operators. So we're just gonna look at the left shift. And this takes a byte or any other number and you can shift all the bits in it by one position to the left or by however many positions you want to. So we're shifting by one position here, you can shift by as many as you want to. So it effectively makes the one bits more significant by the number of times that you specify. So in the simple case where you've got just a single bit set in your byte, shifting to the left doubles that number. You can think about it like that. So useful for constructing bit patterns. If you don't want to write down the numbers, particularly for bigger numbers, you can just shift into the into the pattern and it makes a lot more sense like that and then the last one is just the not operator so again this operates on a single byte or a single number and it just flips all the bits so zeros become ones ones become zeros so let's have a look at what this looks like okay we'll kick that off with cargo run and we can see now we've got these bit operations being printed out so when we take the low half set to ones with our alternating bit pattern and do an or on it we can see that this one here where we've got a one compared with a zero comes out being set and then all the way down the bottom four bits because they're set in on the left they end up set on the right 
and then the fifth bit here is set because it's set in the right-hand side. So we end up with almost all of these set. The AND is similar. All the zeros cause zeros in the output because zero and anything is going to be zero. And then where we have ones on the right-hand side matching ones on the left-hand side, we end up with ones output. Similar for the XOR. So the ones that we get are this seventh bit here with the seventh bit here. We've got a zero and a one that can be output. And similarly with when we have a one on the left and a zero on the right, we get a one in the output. So as you'd expect, the shift by one is interesting. So our zero one zero one zero one pattern becomes one zero one zero one zero one zero instead because everything's been moved one position up and we've ended up with a zero in the first position. And then the knot does what we'd expect. So it's taking the alternating pattern and flipping it. So in this case, it has exactly the same result as shifting left by one, but that's really just coincidence. There's nothing to do with each other. Just because of the pattern we have happens to come out the same. Now, the next thing we want to have a look at is masks. And we're kind of thinking about how these patterns behave and how we can use them. And masks is normally the thing you'll come across for how this is taught. So let's have a look at that first. Okay, let's go ahead and define ourselves a mask. So we're going to create a mask that has the high bit set, the left four bits set to one, everything else set to zero. So I've just added up the numbers here, but we're doing the same thing we were above. And then you can think of the mask as being something like a mask you'd wear on your face, where the solid parts of the mask prevent you seeing through, and then the cutout bits you can see through. So it's a way to apply a mask on top of another number to always have certain bits on or off, depending on whether you're applying an or or an and with your mask. So in this first example, our high bits are set on the left and we do an or operation against the value one shifted twice to the left. So that is a bit pattern with the third bit set from the right and everything else at a zero. So doing an or will end up with the high four bit set and also the bit set by this input. So effectively that mask would be saying all four of the high bits should always be set and then anything that's set in the input on the right is allowed to be kept. And then in the second example we're doing something slightly different. So we're saying compare with AND against the value 1 shifted 6 times. So that would be in binary the seventh bit set to 1, everything else set to 0, or 1 away from the high bit being set. And then doing an AND we will keep that bit set and the bottom four bits will stay as zero. So why is this useful? Well, if you're doing graphics programming, it's a very fast operation. It's much faster than manipulating whole numbers up a level higher, but really it's not that practical. So the more useful way to think about this is in the case where you don't have four bits set, you just have one and you want to know, okay, given a number is a particular bit in that number set, because then you can start to use your bit pattern as a way to store information. And this is the way that we use bit manipulation in network protocols. So that's what we really care about here, is how do I ask for a particular bit being set? So we'll set up another bit of data here. So we've got a flag, which starts at one, shifts by three, so the fourth position set. So we're saying that the fourth position in a number we receive, in a byte we receive, conveys some information. So in this case, we're saying it's an echo operation. So if we see that bit set in a query sent to our server, we're going to echo back the request that was sent. And then the query we're sent is this value 10 here. And that is the thing we're going to check. And we do that by asking, okay, we'll take my flag, compare it using and with the query. And if that bit was set, then the and will retain exactly that bit and throw away all the others, because all the other values will be zero. So whatever was set in the query will be cleared to zero. So this is where masks become really useful, is when you've just got one value set, and you can say, okay, clear everything but the value I care about in this exact bit position, and then I can compare it to myself, compare it to my flag. So if it comes out as exactly the flag, then we know that the input had that bit set. So we'll see exactly what this looks like when we go to print this out. And then we've got a second example where we take 130, so a different number, you can't easily look at it and see. Maybe you can, because the top number's eight and two, the other number's 128 and two, so I've deliberately made this match. But 
let's run this and have a look at what the result is. Okay, we'll kick that off with cargo run. So we can see here we've got two input queries. The first one that's constructed from an eight and a two, which has a value of 10, which is fairly opaque just looking at it as a number, but looking at it as a bit pattern, it makes more sense. So you can see the second bit and the fourth bit are set. And the other one, the second query has the high bit set, 128 and two set. So the query flag that we are gonna check against is the fourth bit being set. So you can see here that the result is true in the first case because we cleared the other bit that was set in that byte and then compared it to itself. And that comes out telling us that yes, that fourth bit is set. And the second example, we've got the fourth bit as zero. So that comes out as false. So in this way, we can extract information from a byte so that we can pack quite a bit of information. So really just Boolean information or you could take a couple of bits out and represent a number, something like that, and convey that over the network using very little space. So a really efficient way to transfer data. So I hope this was interesting and we're gonna get on to using this soon.